Welcome, what is up? Thank you for tuning back into the Chaos Layer. Uh, unfortunately, not under the circumstances that I normally like to greet everybody with. Uh, today we got the news. And I hope that I'm not breaking this to anybody. I hope everybody already knows that today, the professional, the professional wrestling world, if I can say it right, uh, and the brotherhood that I like to refer to it as, brother, brother, uh, that I actually, and I still feel a part of it, or I still feel like I am a part of, uh, is in mourning because of the passing of Bobby the Brain Heenan. It's very sad. It's very eye-opening. The, uh, first and foremost, my condolences go out to Sandy and their daughter Jessica. And I don't know everybody else. I'm sorry. Uh, I think she has a son, but I, that's none of my business. Uh, I can only imagine, <clears throat> excuse me, what you're, what you're feeling. I had a grandfather pass of leukemia, so I, I know that cancer is a bitch. It just is. That's There's no other way for me to put it. For me personally, there's no other way to put it. Cancer is just a bitch. It just is. And it needs to be dealt with. It's very swiftly and severely. And I wish one day and hope and pray that it will be. Uh, but I don't want to think... I don't, I don't know that that's the reason of his passing. But I know that he suffered from and battled... Uh, throat cancer for I think 15 or 16 years so this is this is just what I'm left with this is how I'm coping with it personally uh, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about very quickly because I know people aren't going to want to sit aren't want, I can't even talk tonight people aren't going to want to sit here and listen to me go on and on and on for 30 minutes about Bobby the Brain because they either one don't care, or number two, you know they Bobby wasn't that big of a of an influence in their life as he was in mine. Because I grew up with Bobby Heenan, and you know there's there's two other names that I think of when I think of Bobby Heenan. I think of uh, Gene Oakland and I think of Hulk Hogan, because those three guys are so intertwined with each other, uh, coming from the AWA to the WWF. Uh, to WCW, they all three, and I, I, kn I know without knowing that all three of those those guys are friends. I, I know without knowing. Uh, Bobby Heenan was the greatest professional wrestling manager of all time. There is no dispute. I, there's nothing you can say anybody. The the list of names that he managed. And then, there, it's just so huge. Plus the names that are in the Hall of Fame. No matter your feelings on the Hall of Fame. Uh, Paul Warndorf. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Flair. Anderson. Uh, Blanchard. Uh, Andre the Giant. Uh, Rick Rude. Mr. Perfect. By the way, those two guys, Altwell and Andre, all three should have been world champions. He should have led all three to world title reigns, if not a couple of months or, you know, whatever. Sadly, that never happened. Um, and he had such a passion for the business, whether he was wrestling which a lot of people don't necessarily remember that he was an act. He was a wrestler. He started out as a wrestler and then became a manager. So he's not as well known as a wrestler. Uh, and I hope, I really hope that WWE can do some kind of, and I know they will. I know they'll do some kind of network collection special uh, for Bobby, and it'll probably be out less part of this week or or next week. You know, I'm I'm just I'm sure of it. I just know that they'll do something. I hope that they can dig and actually find uh, footage of him wrestling from the AWA 
uh, at the times he did, or even before that, when he was pretty boy, uh, pretty boy Bobby Heenan, or pretty Bobby Heenan or something. I think it was pretty boy Bobby Heenan, and can can showcase that because people, even that grew up with him, really didn't know of his wrestling, and I didn't. Therefore, the longest time until I researched it and saw, oh, well, he actually wrestled. He actually, you know, when he said he knew the difference between a wrist lock and a wrist watch, maybe he did know it. Uh, but his commentating is something that that he spent the majority of his career, or it felt like it anyway, because uh, I don't know exactly when he started in the business or started wrestling or how long he managed or whatever. I just know that uh, according to his Wikipedia page, anyway. In 1986, he started commentating. And he commentated up until, I think, 1999 with WCW. So he spent from, like, 93 to 99 with WCW. But from 86 to 92, well, the beginning of 93. And the only reason I remember this is because he got kicked out of the Manhattan Center on Raw on one of the first episodes of Raw. I don't remember which one it was. Uh... But he uh, and actually I'll find out because I'm about to I'm about to watch this here very shortly. Uh, but he had there there are certain moments in his commentating career that that should be you know remembered and talked about. For me, uh, one of the most special nights of hearing commentary, and it's probably his best work. Uh, and I think it's widely regarded as his best work, and so I have no problem putting my stamp of approval on it, was the 1992 Royal Rumble where Ric Flair won the WWE title. I just... It was so... He played it so good. Anybody that hasn't seen that, and I just recently... Well, I say recently, but I watched it back this uh, this January... This January, I actually watched every Royal Rumble uh, match up until the one for the year uh, this year in 2017. So I I I got to sit and listen to it, and I'm actually going to watch it again here after a while because it's part of this set. But there also another really good moment was where he was in WCW and the NWO was starting, and it was Bash at the Beach '96 where Hogan turned on WCW. And declared himself Hall and Nash as the New World Order. To hear Bobby Heenan, actually, who for years feuded with Hulk Hogan. I mean, for years they feuded. For him to go, it's Hulk Hogan, yes, yes, he's coming to save WCW, yes. Yes. Oh, you piece of crap. I knew it. I knew you were never good. I was always right. Uh, it was just great. He always put Hogan over huge on commentary. Uh, and it, it, it it's just so, he was just so good. He was just so good at what he did. Last thing I will say is uh, I hope that WWE will do some kind of package to start off Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. Whether or not they do the 10 Bell Salute, which is old school, but they still need to do. They need to bring that back. I want a 10 Bell Salute for Bobby Heenan tomorrow night. We'll see if that happens. Because I think it is very important uh, in the grand scheme of the business. And I want to remind everybody to call somebody a humanoid tomorrow because people will, will dig it. Or if they don't, they know nothing about Bobby Heenan. Uh, a couple of Heenan quotes before we go. Uh, a friend in need is a pest. I'm a legend in this sport. If you don't believe me, ask me. I know all about cheating. I've had six successful marriages, which is funny, but it's not true. North Dakota State, what do you have to do there to graduate? Milk a cow with your left hand? If, you, if you're poor and you do something stupid, you're nuts. 
If you're rich and you do something stupid, you're eccentric. Hawaii is the 50th state. I thought that was a suburb of Guam. I'd love to be popular in uh, Barcelona. That sounds like a fun job. Are there any swamps in Oklahoma? Yes, there is. It's called Tulsa. My apologies to Tulsa. Have you ever been to Glens Falls? The city limit signs are on the same post. Uh, the last one I don't really get, but I'll say it anyway. It's a dog-eat-dog world. And Mr. Perfect is a milk bone. So, there you have it. Uh, let's just remember the times that he gave us. Let's go back and watch clips. Let's, let's enjoy what was given to us of Bobby the Brain Heenan. May you rest in peace, brother, brother. Deuces. Cass out.